In this video, I'm talking about best practice guidelines for hearing aids. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. Many industries have best practice guidelines. Take surgeons for example. One of the best practices for surgeons before they go in and perform a surgery is to actually wash their hands. Even though they wear surgical gloves, the washing of their hands reduces the risk of spreading infection. There are very specific published best practice guidelines on how to perform this procedure to ensure that they reduce the risk of spreading infection as much as possible. In the hearing industry, we also have best practice guidelines that we should be following to ensure that we're doing things the right way. One of these best practices that I talk about all the time is real ear measurement. This is one of the most important things that you need to have done when being fit with hearing aids, but it is only one small part of best practice guidelines. There are a bunch of other guidelines that should be followed when evaluating and treating hearing loss. So I want to provide you with a general overview of these best practice guidelines so you can have a better understanding of what a hearing care provider should be doing to ensure that you get the most out of your treatment. The American Academy of Audiology formed a task force of some of the hearing industry's most educated and highly respected audiologists to develop best practice guidelines for the audiologic management of adult hearing impairment. I won't be able to go in depth on each best practice presented in this guideline, but we'll be providing you with an overview to help you understand the foundations of best practices for adult hearing assessment and treatment. Stay tuned for other videos where I will break down each of these sections in more detail. These guidelines were developed based on the review of evidence and provides recommendations on four general areas. Assessment and goal setting, technical aspects of treatment, orientation, counseling, and follow-up, and assessing outcomes. First, let's talk about assessment and goal setting. There are several things that should be performed before even considering hearing treatment. You should have a comprehensive case history. You should have otoscopy performed, which is when a hearing care provider will look inside of your ears. You should have earwax removal performed if necessary. And then you should be having a hearing assessment followed by a needs assessment. A hearing assessment will result in the diagnosis of the type and severity of your hearing loss and a possible medical referral to a licensed physician if necessary. They should also be reviewing the results of this hearing test with you and whoever came with you to your appointment. And then, and only then, can candidacy for hearing devices be considered. A lifestyle needs assessment should be completed prior to your hearing evaluation or following your hearing evaluation so the hearing care provider can get a really good understanding of what your needs are so they can consider this when recommending actual devices for you. If a complete understanding of your hearing loss and your needs is not obtained, then the hearing care provider is not going to have enough information to make a really good recommendation on your treatment. Identifying your goals for treatment are also very important at this particular phase. If your hearing care provider doesn't know what things you want to actually hear better, it's going to be very hard to evaluate after the fitting to determine if your goals have been met. Now the second area that these best practice guidelines cover is the technical aspect of treatment. This encompasses hearing aid selection, quality control, fitting and verification, and hearing assistive technology. Now when it comes to hearing aid selection, there are a ton of criteria that go into this. I mean, do you need one hearing aid or do you need two hearing aids? Do you need a bone anchored hearing aid? Do you need a device that does cross or bi cross or amp cross? Do you want a volume control? Do you need a telecoil in there? Do you need wireless connectivity with a smartphone? There are a ton of things that your hearing care provider should be taking into consideration before jumping to a conclusion of a particular hearing aid. Then after landing on a particular hearing aid, you need to make sure quality control is done. This is when a hearing aid comes into a clinic, they actually hook those hearing aids up to do a test box measure, which will tell the hearing care professional if those devices are actually performing the way that they should. Quality control is also extremely important after you already have your hearing devices because this is how a hearing care professional will determine if those devices are malfunctioning when you come in for repairs. These test box measures are also extremely important down the road when hearing aids get sent off for repair and when they come back to make sure that they're actually performing up to manufacturer specifications. 
Then you have fitting and verification, and this is where real ear measurement falls into place because real ear measurement is a form of hearing aid verification to ensure or verify that your hearing aids are programmed correctly to your hearing loss prescription. But the physical fit of a hearing device is also extremely important. In fact, I think that this is one of the most important things about a hearing aid because if it's not comfortable, if it's not fit right to your ears, then you're not going to wear it. And perhaps one of the most overlooked things when it comes to the technical aspect of treatment is the discussion of hearing assistive technologies. Sometimes hearing aids alone just aren't enough, and there are tests that we can perform during a hearing assessment to determine whether or not you need to use some form of an accessory to help you hear better. If you go into a noisy situation and you have a really bad speech and noise ability, then you are going to have to use some kind of assistive hearing technology to help you cut through that background noise. Devices like a remote microphone can be the difference between you actually hearing and understanding the person that you're with inside of a noisy environment and not hearing them at all. Third is orientation, counseling, and follow-up. A really good orientation can be the difference between you having success with your hearing aids and not having success with your hearing aids. During an orientation, you should be going over things like how to actually put your hearing aids on and in your ears, how to make volume adjustments, how to use the telecoil, how to talk on the telephone with your hearing aids, and a variety of other things that you really need to know how to do. Following your orientation, counseling and follow-up care are also extremely important for success with hearing treatment. There are going to be things that you're going to experience when wearing hearing aids that you really need to have a hearing care professional kind of help you understand. And if you don't have access to that, you're going to be wondering, are these things normal that I'm hearing or is that really how I'm supposed to hear in this environment? A hearing care professional can actually go over those things with you to ensure that you understand what's actually happening. And then in terms of follow-up care, your ability to have success long term requires you to have follow-up care with your hearing care professional. There's going to be things that they do with your hearing aids to ensure that they're constantly programmed correctly to your hearing loss prescription and if there's other maintenance issues that arise they can handle them before they become a big issue. If you receive really good counseling and follow-up care then your success with hearing treatment will go up dramatically and if you don't receive these things then your success with hearing treatment will go down dramatically. Fourth, you have the outcome assessment, and where real ear measurement is a form of verification, outcome assessments are typically forms of validation. This is where the use of a validated outcome measurement tool following their hearing aid fitting is recommended. You have tools like the hearing handicap inventory for the elderly, you have the abbreviated profile of hearing aid benefit, and then you have my personal favorite, the client-oriented scale of improvement. Completing one of these validated outcome measures at the end of your hearing aid fitting process will ensure that you're actually getting the benefit that you're looking for out of your hearing aids. If we don't evaluate how much benefit you're getting, we never really know if we did a good job or not. Following these best practices ensures that you have the best opportunity to receive the maximum amount of benefit from your hearing treatment. Now there are hearing care providers who do all of these best practices and there is a good amount of them out there. However, finding which ones they are is extremely difficult. That's why I'm starting the Dr. Cliff Approved Provider Network. Beginning in October of 2019, you'll be able to go to my website, drcliffaud.com, and you'll be able to locate a hearing care provider close to you who follows these best practices to ensure that you get the most out of your hearing treatment. I am requiring these hearing care providers actually come to my course to ensure that they understand which best practices they absolutely have to be following to be able to make it into the network and then I will vet them to ensure that they actually follow these best practices. So if high level care is really what you're after then go to drcliffaud.com and save it as a bookmark so when October rolls around you can click on that website and find a great hearing care provider near you. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.